So you decide that you wanna start living on a budget, but then you realize that you need to establish an emergency fund and you need to take steps towards paying off your debt. And all you could think is, how overwhelming does that sound? I don't even have any extra money. But what you need to do is to learn how to create some wiggle room in your budget. Hey guys, I'm Simi Womack from A Sunny Side Up Life and today I'm gonna to tell you how to create some wiggle room in your budget and I have a ton of awesome tips to share with you. But this is a common comment that I hear so often is people will add up their debt or start on a budget and all of this and then they say, we just don't have anything extra. How are we supposed to ever get ahead? How are we supposed to save money or pay off our debt if we just don't have anything extra? And guys, I totally get that and I totally used to be there. But the problem is, is that a lot of people get to this step and then they just quit because they think there's no hope. But for me, I love, I love a good challenge. So I took all of these struggles and turned them into a challenge and really learn from all of these experiences. And I wanna share some of my favorite tips for finding wiggle room in your budget with you guys. So I've compiled a list of my 33 top favorite tips. And of course there's tons, tons more, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this lesson up into a two part video. So today we're just gonna talk about part one and this is tips number one through 17 and we're gonna dig into those. And then in part two, we'll dig into the rest of the tips. All right, so let's jump right in. We have a lot of tips to cover in this video. So number one, it's simply just paying attention. And this seems so simple, but this is honestly the hardest tip on the list because this is really just getting started in the first place, actually being intentional with your money. And the thing about just simply paying attention is that it makes you so much more mindful, mindful when you're shopping, mindful you know, as you're going through all of these daily routines. And it really starts to reveal your weak spots when you establish a budget. And I have this quote on here from Dave Ramsey is a budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went and simply paying attention and being intentional is stopping that wondering where your money went. And that is going to create so much wiggle room in your budget. Tip number two, do a zero dollar budget. What that means is just plan where you're going to spend every single dollar ahead of time and give each dollar a mission. There are no dollars left behind. So every single dollar has a name. That's what it means when you do a zero dollar budget. What you're gonna to wanna to do is write out your bills, establish a spending budget, and then decide with whatever is left over if it goes towards paying off that debt or goes into savings. When your month is over, you shouldn't have any money left over that doesn't have a name. And if you do, of course, that money is going to go right into whatever goal you're working on, like your debt or your savings. Okay, so tip number three is have zero dollar challenge days. So this is basically where you challenge yourself to not spend any money for a certain amount of time. This could just be one day. Or if you want to get really brave, you can challenge yourself to a whole week or even a whole month. And I've seen people do this a lot. So what you do is that it's not that you go without food or you don't pay your bills or anything. It's basically that you just have zero fun money, zero extras and all that kind of stuff. And you just challenge yourself to a certain amount of time. I do zero dollar days all the time. And so I would just stay home for that day, eat at home and just spend no extra money. And those days really start to add up after a while. Number four is learn to say no. When you honestly can't afford it or you can't afford to take off work to go to something, then simply say no. Obviously we don't wanna disappoint our friends, our family, and especially our kids, but sometimes the long-term goals are more important and we have to remember that. So simply say no when you can't afford to go to an event, maybe it's going out to dinner or going to a concert or going on a weekend getaway or something really fun, but you know that you honestly can't afford it or you can't afford to miss work to go to it, simply say no, be polite, be honest and regretfully decline and just explain your situation and explain to them that you're working on some long-term goals right now and you would love to go, but you just can't. Number five, and this is a crazy one, is move. And this is something that I recently did a video and a blog about. If you wanna check out more of that, I'll link to it below. 
but sometimes cutting back on little expenses is just not enough and that's sad but true sometimes you can cut back a lot of little expenses and it's just not enough when your house is too expensive or the city you live in the cost of living is too expensive um, this is just something that you might want to consider and this is something that we're actually doing in order to become debt free all right number six ditch the car maybe you just need to downgrade your current ride to something cheaper or you need to sell an extra vehicle we personally did one vehicle for several several years throughout our marriage until we finally had a third child and three car seats wouldn't fit in our old vehicle so we had to upgrade and get a second vehicle so this is something that you can totally consider if it fits your lifestyle or you could even completely go vehicle free if you live somewhere that has great public transportation or a place that you can walk to get to work in the grocery store depending on where you live but i just put this little tip here that i want you guys to remember that a vehicle that the vehicle that you drive does not define you and you shouldn't let it have control over your financial future and i've talked a lot about how we once purchased a brand new vehicle and how our payment was almost $900 a month and it was suffocating our budget. And I don't want you guys to be in that same situation. So if you are in that situation, this is a great place to create some wiggle room in your budget by ditching the car. Number seven, stop with the interest payment. A lot of people carry around debt and with debt comes interest payments. And these interest payments are no better than lighting your money on fire. They are going nowhere and they're not helping you. So what I wanna encourage you to do is to get mad at your debt, stop using it, it's not a tool to build wealth, and to stop wasting money on the interest payment. So take steps to get that debt paid off and quit wasting money on your interest payments. Number eight, compare prices. Don't be afraid to shop around and take your time and compare prices. Oftentimes we get in so much of a hurry that we neglect this step and this step could save us so much money if we just plan ahead a little bit and take the time to shop around and compare prices before we make purchases. And this can be with anything. This can be with your food, your clothes, large purchases like furniture, cars, even houses, vacations, anything like this. Take your time, do your homework, and compare prices before you commit to buying something. Number nine, negotiate. So this is when you're gonna take the time to remember to ask about loyalty discounts. Maybe you've been with a company, maybe say your insurance company, for several years, and you've just never asked if they have a loyalty discount. So you might wanna ask about promotional rates or cheaper options, maybe downgrading your plan, say your cell phone plan, or if you have an internet package or a TV package, asking about a cheaper option. So this can be applied to most anything, your bills, your spending expenses, um, things that are necessary, or even your luxury purchases. I've even heard of people negotiating things like their haircuts or their mechanic work on their car. Lots and lots of good ideas. If sometimes, if you simply just ask if they're running some kind of special or if they offer any kind of discounts. Number 10, cut the TV. We cut our satellite bill that used to run us $114 a month and we switched to a Roku, which we bought on Amazon for about $40. And now we pay for Netflix and Hulu, which are about $8 a month each. And this is how we do TV now. So even with paying for both of these services, we still save about $1,100 a year. And that's for something just as simple as TV. So I know this is kind of a cliche thing to suggest to cut, but cutting the TV can save you so much money. Number 11, I know everyone says this, but stop eating out. And this totally used to be us. I used to work a crazy 50 to 60 hour week. And we used to spend about $800 a month eating out. And it's a total waste of money. So I wanna break this down a little bit for you, and I want you to think about this. Making a batch of spaghetti, for example, at home costs you about $6, versus going to a restaurant and spending about $12 per adult, maybe $5 per child. So if you have a family of four, and this could save you easily $28, that's not even counting drinks and a tip. 
So if taking like a $30 to $40 meal at a restaurant and turning it into about a $6 meal at home is a crazy amount of savings. So if you do this four times a week for an entire month, this will save you $450 a month, or if you're like us, more around the $800 range a month. This is a crazy way to create some much needed wiggle room in your budget. But one of the things I hear a lot is that I just don't have time. But the thing is that it's not really faster either. By the time you drive to the restaurant, wait for your food, actually eat, wait to pay, and then drive back home, that's pretty time consuming if you really think about it. So I put some suggestions here of things to help you stop eating out so much. Take advantage of your crock pot on those busy late nights. Make freezer meals and meal prep on Sundays. Make double batches of things and eat leftovers. Teach your kids how to help in the kitchen. My oldest is six and she actually helps me a lot. Sometimes she just pours cereal for breakfast or makes sandwiches at lunch, but it's a big help on those days that I'm feeling a little overwhelmed and she loves to help. So any other days that you just don't feel like doing dishes, use paper plates. It's still cheaper even though you have to pay for the throwaway plates. Or swap out dinner duties with your spouse. Maybe if neither one of you like cooking, maybe you can lighten the burden a little bit by alternating nights or taking turns um, cooking on those days that you're feeling super overwhelmed. I just wanna encourage you to get creative but this is a huge, huge expense for most people. And there are so many ways to avoid overspending in this area. Okay, so number 12, for those times when you do wanna to go to a restaurant or you kind of have to for a social event, one of my favorite tips for saving money when eating out is to share meals at restaurants. Be mindful when you go out to eat. Think about what you're ordering, how hungry you really are and how much food is gonna come in that order. Most places have huge servings and are plenty for two people or for you to share with one of your kids. The only suggestion I have here for restaurants is to not let it affect your tip. If you share a meal and say you're a family of four and you just order two meals instead of your normal four, don't let that affect your tip. Remember to tip based on the work that your server put into taking care of you and not necessarily on how much you spent, especially if you're finding ways to kind of cheapen your bill at the restaurant. You don't wanna be a cheap tipper because of this. So number 13, more food advice, is to take advantage of food at events. So I'm not suggesting to go and mooch off your friends and your family. However, when you are at these events, take advantage of the free food that is offered. If your family is anything like mine, especially my mom, my grandma, when you eat at their house, they want you to eat. And a lot of times they want you to take leftovers. I don't know how many times my grandma has sent me home with two more meals worth of leftovers at her house. So take advantage of those times when people are trying to be generous or just having food out at a party. Don't be shy. Come hungry when you know there's gonna be food. People want you to eat their food at their party or they wouldn't have provided it, right? Or they wouldn't have invited you over for dinner. So take advantage of those events. It's kind of a free meal and people love it because they're being hospitable at the same time. So it's totally a win-win. Okay, number 14. So don't hate me for this one before we crunch the numbers on it. And it doesn't have to necessarily be Starbucks, but this is such a great example um, of a place that a lot of people overspend. So if you don't particularly go to Starbucks, whatever is your Starbucks, kind of your place that you dwindle away five or $10 here and there, you can kind of apply that math to this suggestion. So if you spend $5 on a coffee for five days a week for an entire year, that is $1,300. That's crazy. And then if you buy a coffee every single day, seven days out of the week, that's $1,800 a year. And if your spouse buys one, go ahead and double that to $3,600 a year. And if you do this for five years, that's $18,000. And the real kicker here is if you would have applied that money into a good growth mutual fund, then over the course of five years, it would have potentially grown to $22,000 for five years worth of Starbucks. Like that's an insane amount. That's a car, you guys. That's huge. So even if you're not a Starbucks drinker, take something that you think is just a $5 here and there purchase and do this math with it. 
over the course of five years, you could have $20,000. That's crazy. Number 15, more food suggestions here. Bring your lunch to work. And the reasons behind people going out to lunch, there's so many reasons. So I'm gonna kind of bust some of those reasons here for you. A lot of people will say, well, I wanna get out of the office. Well, just because you get out of the office doesn't mean you have to go to a restaurant. You can go to a park and get some fresh air, or you can sit in your car, listen to music, read a book, listen to an audio book, talk on the phone, all of these things that will still get you out of your work environment. Another excuse is I don't have time to pack lunch. Look, it takes just as long, if not longer, to pack your lunch than it does to go out somewhere. I've timed it and I can pack my a lunch for my family of five in about three to five minutes. That's making sandwiches, picking out snacks, pouring drinks, all of that stuff and packing a cooler. It takes me about three to five minutes. I would have challenged you to drive from your work to McDonald's through the drive through lane at lunch hour in less than five minutes. I bet you that you probably can't do it in less time. The other reason is I want a hot lunch. I totally get that. But the thing is, is that most offices, if you work in a traditional office setting, most of them have microwaves, mini fridges. If they don't have a fridge, then you can pack a little cooler and warm up some leftovers maybe. Um, you know, and even if your work doesn't have a microwave, doesn't have a mini fridge, there's probably coworkers around you that wouldn't mind chipping in so they could also save money on their lunch. So just get creative when it comes to bringing your lunch to work because this is a great way to cut back and find that extra money in your budget. So kind of like I just mentioned um, in the last tip, but number 16 is to bring your own snacks. So for me as a stay-at-home mom, um, you know, I don't go to work outside of my house, but when I do go and run errands or go and do other things outside of the house, it's so helpful for me to bring my own snacks. So some of my favorite things to tell people is I have a small canvas purse size cooler that I take with me literally everywhere. And I always pack snacks and drinks for me and the kids whenever we're out of the house. So it's so easy. You just toss in a little ice pack, a few drinks, a couple bottles of water, juice, um, granola bars, cereal and Ziploc bags, oranges, apples, you know, easy snacks like that. And just throw them in the cooler before we head out of the house. And there's no telling how much time or money this has saved me. Um, you know, because it's so hard to stop at a gas station, especially with kids, and come out with a receipt for less than 10 or $15. Plus, it's really time consuming if you have little kids car seats and all of that. So it saves you time and money to pack your own snacks and bring a cooler. This is also a great tip for festivals and fairs and anywhere that they would sell refreshments, but they don't restrict from you bringing outside things. And usually if you have little kids, you can get away with this really well because who's gonna deny a baby her sippy cup and her Cheerios, right? So. Get creative with your snacks and don't be afraid to take a couple of extra minutes and pack a little cooler before you head out of the house. Okay, so my last tip for this part one video is tip number 17, learn to love water. A couple of years ago, you would not have caught me telling you guys this tip, but it is actually the healthiest, obviously, and the cheapest drink. When I'm home, I have a reusable cup with a straw that I fill up for my fridge water dispenser. And so I drink water pretty much all day. And then when I go out to eat, I usually order water as well. And at most restaurants, it is free. And when you drink water from home, it's practically free. It's really, really cheap, way cheaper than anything else you're gonna drink. And side bonus is it's super healthy for you. So if you aren't already a huge water drinker, I really want to encourage you to learn to love water. This used to not be me. And I'm so glad that I'm on the other side of this now. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that this first set of tips helped you and look for part two coming out soon. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Every share helps me so much and I will see you guys in the next video. Hey, did you like these tips and wanna discuss more money saving tips like these with an awesome group of like-minded ladies? 
then I want you to jump over and join the conversation in my private Facebook community today.